Hello, good people. Spot of Nerd here with a brand new episode that might be, might, might be one of our last official episodes for some time because after next week comes the greatest time of year. You all know it. I hope at least you know it. San Diego Comic Con 2024 officially kicks off. Not this coming week, but the following week where it's like the end of July. It's really weird actually because it's the last week of July, but either way, I'm excited. I'm ecstatic. And I want to potentially say that I will be throwing out some content, social media, so don't forget to follow us yada 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 but official new episodes will definitely be put on a pause because of course we are going to give you content from the greatest comic convention that ever was san diego comic con and i could not be more excited about it but until then we have to give you one of the best reviews one of the best movies that i have ever i i, I keep saying that because there actually has been some pretty solid content that has been coming out these past few months this is a little bit delayed the movie came out back in april we are going to talk about one of the greatest vampire movies that i have ever seen in my entire life it's just got badass written all over it and i hope you will stay tuned and listen because trust me you gotta watch this this thing is one of the best movies i've ever seen verbatim we're gonna talk about abigail Before we get started, I will be spoiling the shit out of this film. Supposedly, it's like a reboot, if my understanding is correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, all the usual suspects. I would love you all so, so much. Hit the subscribe right down below. Give me the thumbs up. All the haters, I know you're out there. I love you all too, because quite frankly, it just boosts, 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 boosts my numbers etc so on and so forth even though they are pebbles on a beach in relation to the numbers that i get either way it's great to see you all here but i don't know something about the horror genre it's fiction it's it's not real and if you're worried that like this is how serial killers are made and all this other stuff you've been watching too many documentaries that's all i can say because this is about abigail is about vampires it's about these basically a group of mercenaries that try and kidnap a small child because they're dead basically the child is like bazillion dollars rich so they should they kidnap a child the child turns out to be a thousand year old vampire now if you are a vampire fan like i am all you know is mercenaries child child vampire it's gonna be fucking awesome or at least you hope it's gonna be awesome and lo and behold it's even better than you expected it is absolutely incredible and amazing amazing cast too so as i've mentioned previously in the first most recent few episodes you can look up the cast i'm not going to give you all the names this time but one of the more famous people that's in this film you actually might know him they he's been in a few films but his kind of stardom kicked off with the series legion dan stevens he plays frank in this but you'll also remember he played uh what's his face legion basically professor x's brother that was quite frankie and we're gonna talk about this more in the future specifically with the bear series so dan steven legion legion was quite possibly like the bear that we're gonna talk about in the future a perfect show and there's a lot to dive into with that so again we're gonna go on that topic later but i do want to reference him because he is absolutely incredible he the man can play every role under the sun so he was also recently in godzilla x kong the new empire played a very random character there but ultimately is he's a part of this group of mercenaries and you have this ginormous cast of amazing people actors and actresses going down the list the way i'm going to refer to him as we're going to call him muscle we're going to call frank well we'll just call him legion and Abigail obviously is the vampire. You have the jock ride ride person, basically the guy who gets killed off first. You have Bra 
brains. I'll just call her brains because she's the tech girl. And there's also a military guy. But also, but one of the main, main actresses. Again, just look it up. But we'll just call her Survivor. Because <laughs> she's, she's the only one that fucking survives. Big spoiler there, yeah. Everybody fucking dies except her. So we'll just call her Survivor. And it's really that simple. Abigail is just that simple mercenaries kidnap a child the child is about 12 years old the child happens to be a thousand year old vampire the vampire of course living for a thousand years has developed a lot of wealth so these mercenaries basically kidnap her to get a 50 million dollar ransom so the way she gets food is she lures these people into kidnapping her taking them to a mansion like this abandoned mansion and quote-unquote likes to play with her food other famous people you'll know that you can look up again the cast because i don't really care to look up the dude who plays a lot of actually bad guys specifically breaking bad he's been in the mandalorian this film he plays lampert you'll know him his official name if i remember correctly giancarlo espinoza esposito see helps if i have Oops, if I have my little handy dandy notepad. Obviously, he's an amazing actor, and he is kind of... There's obviously this trickery. There's everybody stabbing each other behind each other's backs. But ultimately, Abigail makes him a vampire. He is turning his back on Abigail. Thus, is kind of also helping out these mercenaries to kind of survive. It's a little bit more involved in relation to the story, but it's not that important. So I'm not really, really going to focus on that. I'm going to more focus on the mercenaries mercenaries themselves either way lampart is the one that lures the mercenaries to the mansion locking everybody inside and saying good luck that's where the gold is so in the beginning survivor is going to be the one that basically takes care of abigail when they first kidnap her obviously abigail plays the innocent little child you know like oh no i've been kidnapped what am i gonna do fake tears yada 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 everybody's buying it all the mercenaries are buying it until so abigail kind of plays with their minds you know starts saying like hey i heard this from you know who and you know who said this about you thus to get everybody to turn on themselves it's very well done it really really is it sounds simple but sometimes that's all you need and in and especially in this horror gore vampire-esque type film simple really is more more what is that phrase what does he say less is more and that could not be more defined by this film after she's kind of mixed things up she's kind of starting to get everybody to question the others she reveals herself she reveals herself to be a thousand year old vampire and that is when all chaos breaks loose just prior she does kill off the driver yeah whatever you uh, i don't really again i don't know what the hell they call him other than just he was the driver in the beginning he gets his head ripped off tech girl finds him with his head removed and like i said that's just very very briefly before she officially reveals herself to be a vampire and once she does it the very first shot of her being a vampire is so fucking cool so incredible and there's a very if you look at the cinematography the production value i think that's where i gotta give so much credit you know spot of nerd here we're giving this three out of four i swear it might even be if i could learn how to do a half this would be three and a half cups of tea out of four from your truly spot of nerd it's just that good i swear people it is really really that good and so as after she reveals herself to be a vampire she legitimately starts playing with her food and that's where the awesome kicks in because this group of mercenaries is they're stuck in a house they can't get out of and they think they can challenge a 12 year old thousand year old vampire it's fucking amazing so you gotta ask yourself what the fuck do they do against a thousand year old vampire who is a 10 times stronger than all of them it's so going back a little bit abigail is really passionate about ballet dancing so you know the opening sequence is her performing at ballet and that's a lot of the you know when she's killing a lot of these mercenaries she's doing it to dance she's ballet dancing over their dead bodies she's literally using the driver's dead body as a companion piece it's fucking gold as i've said broken record moment yours truly spot of nerd when we did winnie the pooh 
part two, Blood and Honey. It's it's just gold. It really, really is. And there's even right before they kind of plan to attack Abigail because they're trying to figure out, oh my God, we're all going to fucking die. We got to fight back. There's this beautiful conversation sequence between the group where they're like, what do we know about fucking vampires? Because the fuck, what are we going to do? And then I love Techie Girl's response. Like, well, what do you mean? Do you mean like fucking True Blood vampires? Do you mean Twilight vampires? So they have this really hilarious so they're starting to talk about well garlic and sunlight and holy water and crosses and all this other stuff and so as the movie progresses and they start to try and fight off abigail they realize th there's just so many amazing little sequences that i won't go over every single one here because we'll run out of time but you know abigail grabs the garlic they find and it just she just sniffs it as if like garlic ain't gonna do shit to me muscles has a cross and he thinks that's gonna protect him, but ultimately Abigail uses that cross to basically stab him a whole bunch of times. And it's just shit like that that I fucking absolutely love about films like this. I really, really do because, you know, when you hear vampire, you, you think you might think of Blade, you might think of old Dracula and stuff like that. But what's so unique about this film, albeit it might be a reboot of an original film that quite frankly I don't know about, I'm not even gonna lie to you, this is just so well done in its own original take on it. It knows it's trying to be funny. It knows the gore is over the top. It has an amazing cast of people that truly you either might recognize from previous work or they're brand new folks. When they come together, they work in, a, in the most fluid sense possible. The cherry on the top is you have this girl that's just nailing this vampire role. I don't really know too much about this young actress, but the way that she portrays a thousand-year-old vampire covered in blood, ripping bodies to shreds, is absolutely amazing people and that's why i have to give i dip my hat all the usual positive reinforcement compliments i guess if you want to call it but that's what makes this movie so well done is because and like i say when she's murdering people she's doing ballet dances covered in blood there's bodies everywhere one of the gruesomest scenes in movie history i've ever seen is the techie gal she's trying to fight off abigail and she just somehow gets sucked down into this little uh i guess like a cellar type thing which ultimately leads into the mansion's pool and the pool is littered with bodies decaying gross nasty ass bodies and this is where i gotta give so much credit to I guess the budget they had maybe that they put into the film because you feel that when she's in this pool you can just imagine the smell of rotting decaying bodies that have been there for a very very long time and now she's covered in it so it's fucking great towards the end of the film obviously things are progressing people have died off the best part is abigail bites techie gal techie gal and muscles split off so so they decide to try and find Abigail because it's sunlight out. So obviously sunlight, we do find out, does actually hurt her. So there's a scene where they they think they've trapped her in a cage. It's a fucking vampire. You're you've never gonna you're not gonna trap a fucking vampire in a cage. It's just not gonna fucking happen. There's a scene when she breaks out of this cage that she ultimately survivor breaks one of the windows or boards down. A piece of sunlight hits Abigail and it literally fries and blows off one of her arms. You can see her regrowing the arm, which is pretty fucking amazing. And such great acting from this little girl because she's giving it her all where like imagine if your arm blew up this 12 year old is acting in a way of like your arm literally just blew up it's fucking nuts so just before that she actually did bite brains and for anybody who knows vampires in order to turn a person into a vampire i'm going true blood here you not only have to bite the victim but you have to give them their blood now obviously it's a movie we're not gonna go too much critiquing on the vampire sense but abigail does manage to turn brains into a vampire the way that brains 
becomes a vampire is so fucking great. It is so great because obviously Abigail can't touch them. That's the sunlight. She's obviously regrowing her arm. She uses brains and as they get back into the main library room where there's like all this I guess where Abigail was originally turned into a vampire so on and so forth there's more sunlight there. Survivor picks up this like mirror dish thing and points the sunlight at brains and brains literally explodes. My father turned me in here. A lot of painful memories. But it's never too late to make new ones. If you remember, if you ever were a fan of True Blood, which I do think is one of the greatest series ever made, basically about vampires and werewolves and shit. Imagine when one of those vampires was dead, they blew up into a thousand pieces and a big splash of blood everywhere. That's exactly what happens to brains, and that's exactly how you kill these vampires in this world of Abigail. So incredibly awesome, people. You're going to be hearing me say that a lot, so get used to it. The broken record moments are going to be all over this film. It's just so fucking well done. Please, please watch this film, especially if you love gore and vampires and all that stuff. It really, really is that good. So we get to the end of the film, and obviously, like I said, it is very brief in the beginning. Lampart is double-crossing Abigail, so he lures Survivor and Legion down into kind of where he was able to monitor the whole house to kind of see where everybody was. He obviously says to Legion, hey, I'm trying to blackmail Abigail. Do you want me? Do you want in? Do you want to help me do this? So he turns Legion into a vampire and obviously the man can act. That man deserves an Oscar. For all I know, maybe he has one. I don't know, but that man can play any role possible and the way that he portrays a vampire is disturbing. Like, we're talking holy shit dude you did your research you're also i don't know if you're almost too good at this playing a vampire and obviously the only person left is survivor girl so it's one of those things where after lampart makes legion a vampire fucking legion goes fuck you dude and kills lampart so he can basically be the only one in charge he's kind of the all be all vampire now his only next last step is to take out abigail especially for all the hell that's just gone on and it's just the last fight sequence is so fucking dope people seriously so obviously abigail knows that you know her life has been full of double crossers and now that she's got legion to take care of legion being the stronger at that moment takes a bite out of abigail thus abigail needs survivor to help her take out legion i'm sure this has probably happened to her somewhere in the past i mean she's been alive for a thousand years i'm sure people have put up a good fight but this is probably the first time that abigail has really been challenged by another vampire it's it's really that last fight sequence is fucking dope and one of the most like heartfelt pieces to the film like i really as much as you can believe there was a heartfelt moment you know before abigail outs herself as a vampire she tells survivor you know like do you pinky swear that you'll never let him harm me so at the end of the film the very end as legion is just biting right down on Abigail, draining her blood because that's the only way that he could kill her. She basically puts up her arm and it's like this little pinky thing as if like, you you better hold up to your agreement because Abigail did say, hey, if you help me take him out, I will actually let you live and you can then go back to your kid. She's like an ex-drug addict. She's got a kid, blah, 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 blah. So they tag team together to take out Legion and it's just so fucking dope. The last sequence has them with a wooden stake right to his heart and one of the best lines people one of the best lines in movie history from a 12 year old girl who is a thousand year old vampire goes along the lines of <laughs> about being a vampire, Frank. It 
takes a long fucking time to learn how to do all the cool shit. Oh, fuck. It is so fucking amazing, people. <laughs> Seriously. And I laugh because it's just, it's such a well done film. It really, really is. And ultimately, Survivor does get out of the house. She's covered, literally head to toe, in blood. And she just walks out, she gets in the van, and she drives off, and the credits roll. It is so fucking good, people. Give Abigail, the actress, the 12-year-old the kid, or however old she is, give her a fucking Oscar for that role. I mean, imagine just all of this goop and this j fake blood all over you while filming this film and you still outperform some of the most prestigious actors or actresses that I know of but lo and behold please please folks just go and see this you will not be disappointed I promise I think you swore right folks I've been going on a little too long here because it's just so great and you can see the passion in my voice about just how awesome this movie really is thank you all so so much if you've made it this far for watching and listening on through the podcast but I would love to know your thoughts have you seen it are you gonna see it now because of just how awesome I've told you about it just ah no more words to say other than stay tuned because we have got so much incredible content you know you're truly from from Spot of Nerd at San Diego Comic Con, we are going to be posting a lot more outside of YouTube and Rumble, more on the Instagrams, Twitters, things like that, like the photos. Just make sure you're following Spot of Nerd everywhere you can here, but also outside of here, so that way you don't miss out on that. And I promise you, I will be coming back to more regularly scheduled episodes as soon as we possibly can. But until then, folks, we will see you guys next time. Later, y'all. Also, one more quick little brief. Hey, you might want to stay tuned, especially if you aren't subscribed yet to this channel. Deadpool and Wolverine are coming out that two weeks out now or whenever you're seeing this basically july 26th i believe it is yours truly is seeing it july 25th and i will be putting out a very very small very minimalistic review on just how good or hesitantly bad this movie just might be so i'm excited about it as i've said this many times before in many episodes i'm very hesitant on how this movie is going to perform it's gonna knock it out of the park but is it the savior to the MCU, no. This is going to be a one-time wonder, and that's about it. But you will get a full review from me once I get back from San Diego Comic-Con. Stay tuned for that. Otherwise, stay tuned because we will be giving a lot more little tidbits here and there about the film. While we're in San Diego, after we see Deadpool and Wolverine premiere that Thursday night, if you get my drift. Does it all make sense? I'm just trying to make sure it makes sense even in my own head. So stay tuned, subscribe, like the whole nine yards. Spot of nerd. Don't miss out, because I love y'all. <laughs>